Howdy, it's Kyle discussing census data as it relates to metropolitan areas in the U.S. In this video, I'll be using official U.S. 2020 census data for cities and counties to help calculate the largest metropolitan areas in the country. And even though I am using the official data, I have a different methodology for calculating the metropolitan areas. It's a little bit different than what the census does. For the most part, it's going to be the same, but there are going to be a few that are a little bit different. I'm going to be using consolidated metro areas for the calculations. There are 60 in the U.S. that are over 1 million people. Of those 60, 58 of them are gaining population. Many of them might have an individual city or county within the metro that is losing population, but the overall metro is gaining. So let's take a look at the 60 in the country that are over 1 million people. Right off the bat, I'm lying, as there are technically only 59 metros in the U.S. with over 1 million people. But since Omaha has about 994,000 people and is growing, I figured I would cut them some slack. Some of that population is across the Missouri River in Iowa, but a good majority of the metro area population is on the Nebraska side. With just barely over 1 million people, Metro Tulsa is growing, and it takes up a decent chunk of northeastern Oklahoma. Metro Honolulu is synonymous with Honolulu County, most of which is the island of Oahu. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be just over or just under 1 million, but here it is, just over. The Dayton-Springfield area in southwestern Ohio is about 45 minutes northeast of Cincinnati. It does have some rust on its belt, but it is growing slowly and the houses are cheap there. Metropolitan Tucson is a one-county metro area. Pima County, with just over 1 million people, is the entire Tucson metro area. Metro Rochester on the south shore of Lake Ontario is growing pretty slowly. At the 2010 census, there was about 1 million people exactly, so it hasn't grown a whole lot, but it is growing very, very slowly. Another one that's growing very slowly is Birmingham, Alabama, with just over 1,050,000. There were just under 1 million in the metro area at the 2010 census. At the extreme west end of Texas is El Paso, and some of the suburbs spill over into New Mexico, but almost 900,000 of the people in this metro area are in El Paso County. Providence is one where I calculate it a little bit different than the census. I count the metro Providence area as essentially the entire state of Rhode Island. It's really difficult to determine where Bristol County, Massachusetts falls, if it's a Boston suburb or a Providence suburb. But really, we're probably at about the time where we get to start counting Boston and Providence as one giant consolidated metro area. The Greenville-Spartanburg area of the upstate of South Carolina is the first of many where it's just a big cluster of a bunch of smaller towns that adds up to one large metro. The city of Hartford has a population decline, but the overall metro area has a very slight increase, just over 1.2 million. The Grand Rapids, Michigan metro area has just over one and a quarter million people. Even though Muskegon is a good 35 minutes away from Grand Rapids, it is considered part of the same larger metro area. Just under 1.3 million is the Buffalo, Niagara Falls metro area in New York. This is one where the metro area might feel a little bit bigger than its population. Memphis, Tennessee at about 1.3 million has a few suburbs in both Mississippi and Arkansas, but the vast majority of the population in this metro area is in Tennessee. The Richmond-Petersburg area of Virginia has been growing quite a bit. About 20 years ago, this place was pretty rough, but it's been largely gentrified and a lot of folks are moving there now. At just over 1.3 million, this is the far southern end of the overall northeastern megalopolis. The Brownsville, McAllen, Edinburgh area of South Texas along the Rio Grande River is another area where it doesn't seem like it's as big as the population states, but because it's just like the Greenville Spartanburg area, it's a big collection of a bunch of medium and smaller sized towns that come together to form one decently sized metro area at over 1.3 million. Stockton, Modesto, California is the northern end of the San Joaquin Valley and its two counties, San Joaquin and Stanislaus. There's been decent growth in these two counties as they're not too terribly far from the San Francisco Bay Area, but they're much, much cheaper. The New Orleans metro area saw a huge population decline following Hurricane Katrina about 15 years ago, but there has been steady increase since and the population is approaching 1.4 million in the metro area. Louisville or Louisville, Kentucky is one that sits right there along the Ohio River. The vast majority of the population of the metro area is in Kentucky, but there are a handful of people that are across the border in Indiana. Oklahoma City is one I think is larger than most people expect. It's about one and a half million people and it's been growing quite a bit lately. You might not think of Oklahoma as a state that would have two metros over one million people, but it does. Jacksonville, Florida is located in the extreme northeast corner of the state and it's been growing at a decent clip and it extends as far south as the historic city of St. Augustine. The Norfolk, Virginia Beach, Newport News area in southeastern Virginia has been growing very slowly. There's been about 1.6 million people there for about the past 20 years. Greensboro, Winston-Salem, High Point metro area in North Carolina is affectionately known as the Piedmont Triad. 
perhaps the best named metro area in the country. I think it's bigger than most people expected, over 1.6 million. Although I wasn't surprised to see my home metro up here, it is still kind of weird to see it at almost 1.8 million. And this is pretty similar to the Greenville-Spartanburg area in South Carolina or the Brownsville-McAllen area in Texas. It's a big cluster of a bunch of medium and smaller sized towns, although Fresno County alone does have over 1 million people. Just up the road from me is the fast-growing Nashville, Tennessee metro area. A lot of folks are moving to Nashville. A lot of folks from Nashville are moving to Chattanooga to get away from the folks moving to Nashville. Columbus, the state capital of Ohio, has been growing quickly lately. It sits roughly halfway between Cincinnati and Cleveland and has a metro area of over 2 million people. The state capital for the state just west of it, Indianapolis, has been growing slower than Columbus but still has over 2 million people. Population growth was much slower in the early 2010s but has picked up a little bit more in the past few years. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is a good example of a metro area where the central city is losing population but the overall metro area is gaining. And the metro area extends all the way down to the state line with Illinois. The Raleigh-Durham metro area in North Carolina has the same population as Milwaukee but I put it one spot ahead because it is growing faster. And this is yet another state capital. The Cincinnati metro area is growing pretty slowly at just under two and a quarter million. Most of that population is in Ohio, but there is a decent number of people in northern Kentucky and a really small amount in the southeastern corner of Indiana. Breaking into the top 30 is fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And like Tucson, this is another metro area where it's just one county, Clark County. The Kansas City metro area sits just over 2.3 million. A little more than half of the people live on the Missouri side, but there are quite a few on the Kansas side as well. Austin is another state capital, and it's been growing quite a bit. You've probably heard a lot about Austin's growth in the news lately. The city has passed seven other metro areas since 2010, and that includes some pretty fast-growing ones like Las Vegas and Raleigh. Pittsburgh is one of the two metros on this list that's actually losing population. The city of Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, and the suburban counties are all losing population. Sacramento is yet another state capital that's been growing at a decent clip. A lot of folks from the San Francisco Bay Area have been moving there because it's much cheaper to live in Sacramento. And you gotta love the irony of the California state capital being cheaper than the Texas state capital to live in. San Antonio might very well be the metro that is flying the most under the radar. Almost 2.6 million people, growing a lot, but you don't really ever hear much about it. But in about 10 years, expect San Antonio and Austin to be just one large mega metro area. Another one that's been growing a lot is Salt Lake City. One thing interesting about this one is that the city of Salt Lake only has about 200,000 people, so it's a very small part of the overall metro area. A lot of folks are moving there, but the population growth there is largely due to high birth rate. St. Louis, like Milwaukee, the city is losing population, but the overall metro is gaining. But most of the population in this metro lives on the Missouri side, but there are a handful on the Illinois side as well. Charlotte is the largest metro area in North Carolina. Approximately 2.5 million people of the metro area live on the North Carolina side, but there are also about 300,000 people on the South Carolina side. Portland is another one that's been growing quite a bit. Most of the population here is on the Oregon side, but there are about half a million people or so across the Columbia River in Washington. And this metro does extend south to the state capital of Salem. Orlando is one that's been growing very quickly over the past 10-15 years, to the point where the metro area has over 3 million people now. Personally, I'm no fan of Orlando, but a lot of people like it, and it's growing a lot. The Cleveland metro area, which includes Akron, has been growing very slowly. There are just under 3.3 million people in that metro area, and it's had about that same population for about the past 20 years. San Diego is another one where it's just one county that makes up the metro area. San Diego County has about 3.3 million people. Denver, Colorado has been growing a lot this century. It's approaching 3.5 million people, and there really isn't that much space between Denver and the metros to the north up to Fort Collins and to the south of Colorado Springs. The Minneapolis-St. Paul area of Minnesota has been growing at a decent clip for a big city in the Midwest. Over 90% of the population of this metro area lives on the Minnesota side, but there are a handful of people that live across the border in Wisconsin. The Tampa Bay area is growing a lot, just like all the other large metros in Florida. This includes Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, and goes down to Bradenton and Sarasota. It's getting close to 4 million people, and it's also getting close to being completely connected to Orlando. Although Detroit Metro is growing slightly, its overall ranking in the U.S. keeps going down. And now it's at 14th at almost 4.7 million, although I do expect that by 2030 Detroit will get back onto the positive side in terms of gaining population. 
Metro Phoenix is one of the fastest growing metros in the country, with Maricopa County alone having more than 4 million people, and as yet another state capital has been growing a lot. The Seattle-Tacoma metro area has been growing very quickly, and it's completely sucked in the state capital of Olympia. It's getting close to 5 million people in the metro area, and I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. There's a really nice natural break between number 12 Seattle and number 11 Miami. There are no metro areas in the U.S. in the 5 million population range, and Miami-Fort Lauderdale has just over 6.1 million. And this metro extends north to include Palm Beach County. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is similar to Detroit in that its overall metro is gaining in population, but its ranking in terms of the rest of the U.S. has been going down. Most of the metro area is on the Pennsylvania side, but there is a decent number of people on the New Jersey side and in the northernmost county in Delaware. Growing like crazy is Atlanta. At almost 6.4 million people is another really fast-growing state capital. We go down there a few times a year, and just over the years, we've noticed just how much bigger it's gotten, just how much more crowded it's gotten. The traffic was bad 10 years ago. It's really bad now. The Boston metro area is pretty much the eastern half of Massachusetts and the southeastern corner of New Hampshire going up to Nashua. There are almost 6.7 million people in the metro, but like I was alluding to before, you almost have to start including Providence as part of this overall greater metro area. If so, Boston Providence would have about 7.8 million people and be ranked a couple of spots higher on this list. The Houston-Galveston Bay metro area is also growing pretty quickly. Harris County is the third most populous county in the country, and the overall metro area has almost 7.2 million. After incredible growth in the first decade of this century, the San Francisco Bay Area's population growth has slowed down a little bit in the past decade. However, it still sits at over 7.7 .7 million people and continues to grow. At number five is the rapidly growing Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. In 2020, it surpassed the 8 million mark. Most of the suburban growth has went to the north and northwest of Dallas or to the north and northeast of Fort Worth, and it essentially goes all the way up to the Oklahoma state line. Chicago, along with Pittsburgh, are the only metros where the overall area is declining in population. However, at over 9.2 million people, it is still a huge metro area. The vast majority of that population lives on the Illinois side, but there are a decent number of people in northwestern Indiana. At number three is probably the most convoluted metro area in the country, and that's the D.C. Baltimore area. This includes Washington, but also most of central Maryland, most of northern Virginia, and the eastern panhandle of West Virginia. And the overall greater CMSA has over 9.6 million people, and will almost certainly have more than 10 million people before you know it. Los Angeles metro has at over 18.5 million people. Los Angeles County alone has over 10 million people although L.A. County is actually going down in population. A lot of those folks are moving to San Bernardino and Riverside County, so the overall metro area is growing, which is crazy because it's already over 18.5 million. And number one is, of course, New York City metro area, and it has almost 21 million people in this metro. An interesting bit of trivia is that the New York City metropolitan area has more people than the state of New York. And in almost 21 million people, it is the largest metro in the U.S. and one of the largest in the entire world. So those are the 60 metro areas in the U.S. with a population greater than 1 million. And people keep moving to cities and suburbs and exurbs. And the overall metro areas keep growing. And there are 60 right now, but there are also about 4 or 5 in the 900,000 range. So in a few years, we might have about 65. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about U.S. geography. I'm talking about cities and counties and states and ranking them in all kinds of different categories, talking about cross-country road tripping, and everything I talk about comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.